Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Okay. Okay, buddy, we're live. We're live. Okay, sweet. Friday Night Flies. I'm back in the saddle. Been a few weeks. Uh, first week I was away, I had a co-host interview with Don Frenchy. No, he was on there last week. Uh, second week, I had to, unfortunately... Sad part is my grandpa passed away, so we had to go to his celebration of life. That was all good. But now I'm back, tying one of my favorite patterns, a Mighty Might Golden Stone, as I call it. It I got mo I got a lot of the materials from Superfly and Chinook Wind Outfitters, so thank you, you guys. Um, we got a lot of our good sponsors, Dr. Slick, Solares. I'm using all all our sponsorships today in our in That's this pattern. Man. So. That's man. Hey, we, uh, and I did notice you got yourself a new haircut. New right? haircut, looking fresh. Hey, right? looking fresh. Spiffy looking, clean. That's right, single handsome man, keeping it fresh. Yeah, ladies. That's right. <laughs> okay, so okay. You, we're going to go down and have a look at this new fly you're tying. Give it a slow roll for us, okay? Okay, so this is my Mighty Mike Golden Stone. Man, I'll tell you, that thing is looking damn sexy. Yeah, a little bit of both worlds with the black and the gold with a black and a gold stone so i could see that working with even the, like a black stone too with I, a black head man. exactly black well i i made black ones i've got these gold ones so do they have an olive cone that you could put on say like on the golden stone i don't know we gotta work on that one uh, we do okay i i really want to try that all right so anyhow okay. get busy man let's, let's get time feed the fire that burns inside everybody that's watching tonight yeah okay so i'm using uh partridge size four streamer hook most of you guys would think that's pretty big for a stone but I've got a lot of material that goes on here and everything so it's not as big as everyone thinks so I gotta tighten this up I got to tighten this up okay so I'm using cereal that goes on here and everything so I it's typically not as use big all as everyone of, but I just got home from school and I quick whipped over here so I threw the first material that I saw in my box in there so now that we've got this on I'm gonna make a little bit of a dam right here and this is gonna help splay our uh, two back wing feathers out or goose biots out so I got black goose biots from Superfly nice long guys first one you can see the curvature of them I'm going to make sure that's facing out. So I'll do your guys' side, then I'll do mine. So you can see how that already jumps out. Well, maybe not. I don't know about your camera angle. Do my side, make sure they're lined up properly. I've seen guys do them where they time in both at a time. I've done it before, but I find if you want a nice looking stone on live, might as well just make sure everything's right where you want it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wrap this down. Lock her down. Now, I'm going to tie in my Superfly Olive uh, glitter and I've put this on a bobbin just makes it easier because this is what I'm going to use to help build up my body and where did that red I've got some small red UTC wire here as well and that's going to help give it some weight it's going to help hold everything together it's going to give it a nice rib I like wire all around it's fantastic stuff I hope I cut this long enough. If I didn't cut this long enough, we may not have a rib. <laughs> we might not have a rib. We might not have one. <coughs> Where'd you get these ones from? Okay. Uh, they're in the box, the bag. So now I'm just gonna wrap my thread up. Take one. I'm just gonna do a quick whip finish off them. Are you tying our deceiver tonight? Yeah. Which one are you tying? So quick whip finish because. I'm going to be adding my my curvature of my body in here. 
So I got the Superfly glitter thread. I'm gonna take it up to about halfway. That's where we're gonna. I didn't know how the fuck you did it. Right here. That's where we're gonna have our legs. We're gonna have everything. So that's where I want to start. I'm gonna just try and cover the body. Now I'm I'm not gonna add any more back there just because it's already fat enough. And I like this stuff because it gives it a shimmer in the water. You got your traditional golden stones with your stonefly dubbing, and that's a little bit more bland, but when you're on more cloudy, overcast day, this is sometimes nice to use. And I'm just going to build up the segmentation of this fly. Big words for me. So I'm just going to build that up, keep building it up. This stuff is fairly thick, so it doesn't take very long. I just like to make sure that it, everything's nicely done up on these. Granted, fish probably don't care a whole lot. I fished when I first started fly tying, fished it when it didn't have any segmentation, but this is usually nicer. Build this up right here. Okay, there we go. Now we got that built up. So now I'm gonna whip finish this again. So then that's all good. Cut that off with my cheaper scissors just because that's got a little bit of wire in it. So I don't want to wreck my Dr. Slicks. Even though they could easily handle this stuff. Yeah, that's all good. Okay. Now that I've got that back in there, I'm gonna wrap. Like this, so I'm gonna take oh, my, sure gonna take my hackle pliers. If you don't got some of these, highly suggest it. I'm just gonna wrap uniformly up. Ooh. <laughs> Almost like this is long tight. enough. <clears throat> So, yeah, we're tying it in tight quarters here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Tight quarters. Okay, so now you can see where that segmentation just dips down. I'm just going to hold my wire there, my finger, till I can get it down here, and then that doesn't move as much on me. And now I'm just going to take my thread, I'm going to wrap up this like this, like so. Again, Take my cheaper scissors, just snip that wire off right there. Just gonna lock her down. And now I'm going to take my bone dry solar as right here. Comes with a nice little brush. I'm just gonna paint it on here. And that just hardens everything up from your rib. Just make sure you don't get any on the tip of your hook or else there goes all that hard work. Unless it's a show fly. Yeah. It'll be difficult for them to get it in their lip is what you're saying. Yeah. Just going to give that a quick zap. Look at that smoke right there. Oh. Smoking. Vape niche, bro. It's funny how that does it, and it stinks too, eh? It lets it off a little scent when you burn it. Just a little. Just clean that up a little bit more. And that helps build up the body as well. So that's why I didn't make the segmentation as big. Like, you could go as big as you want. I've seen Golden Stones a lot bigger, built a lot bigger than this. So, but this is average size for our area. <coughs> So I'm now gonna wrap this up. Now you can see in the, with this bead, there's a little bit of a slot. And I like that because when you're done, you can put a little bit of that bone dry in there and it'll lock and it'll travel all through your thread and everything and it'll lock everything in place when you hit it with that light. I've got my- Not always. Not always. Diamond Dub assortment. 
Okay, this stuff is miracles, gives you tons of dubbing. I love it. And I'm using the olive golden uh, dubbing. I'm just going to noodle this on here. No need for a dubbing loop. I'm going to give it a nice base to start with. I always like to give it a base to have your wings ride on. Helps it so that they don't splay apart on you as much. Granted, I put a little bit of a special serum into my wings so that they'll never splay apart on you. Or, not never, but most likely won't. This stuff's a little bit stringier, makes it look a little <coughs> bit buggier as well, which I like. Now, there we go. So now I've got that in place. Now I'm going to take my first set of wings. And all I've got is a goose feather. But what I've done to it right here is I've put some solar res flex on there. You can put any other solar res on there. But I find with the flex, if you're bending your wings a lot, you're not going to have them cracking and splaying on you like I said. So I'm just going to cut off a chunk right here. It's getting busy in here tonight. It is. Yeah. Right. Jordan, we're going to need some help over here, buddy. Okay. So we're doing a lot. So now I've just got that cut off. I'm going to use this size as the good back side. I'm just going to make a nice little indent on here for the wing. So as you can see, just like that. Now I'll do that again on the bottom, and then that gives it its taper so that you can then tie it in nicely. Okay, so now it's busy in here today. So now I'm going to put my wing on just like that. You can see I can give it a little bit of a bend. Wrap her in place, lock her down. Brad says, lock it down. Lock her down. So now you can see that wing can now jump up a little bit. I got a little bit sloppy with the solar as there, but I don't think fish is really gonna care. Now I've got, I put in my description, goose biots. You can use goose, uh, you know what? I'll use goose biots. I showed you guys the one with the silly legs, but I'll use the goose biots this time. Same thing, um, same techniques. I'll put goose biots in this time. So, goose biot on the outside, same. I want to be facing about down to your body, down to where you're tied your other goose biots in. Just put that in place. Now these flies, if you don't like to go as fancy on the wings like what I do, you can always just curl them over with your bodkin and then tie them off. And that that saves you quite a bit more time, actually. So now I'm just going to cut these. There we go. Add a little bit more dubbing. And I like to just really get a nice amount of dubbing on there because then your next your next set of wings are going to ride on that. So where I cut that last time to give that taper, it's set up for now. So now I just have to cut them off. And I'm just ever getting smaller and smaller with my wings every time to just make it fit with that head and everything nicely. So I'll tie that in right there now. Lock 
lock her down real well, real nicely. Here we go. You're making that fly look pretty sexy there. Yep. Ethan, give us a little slow roll here just so we can see the progress as you're going here. So there you go. There's what the wings will look like. And I'm telling you, if you have fast, cold moving water year round, I guarantee you you've got stone flies in your river. Guarantee it. Because they like their oxygenated water. And if you've got cold moving, high mountain streams I've seen them in, they just eat these things up. I've seen steelhead go after these. I've seen trout go after these. Brown trout, every fish species imaginable. I can, well, maybe not saltwater species, but most freshwater species you can fish for with for a golden stone if you've got fast moving cold water which coming from Pemberton can guarantee you we have so I'm just gonna dub that on there again whole bunch of new stuff on the wall this eh? it's looking good yeah we just bumped up so our, uh, selection this I typically use a stonefly dubbing but for this because I'm not using it for the body we're doing this one today. It is a lot easier to use, I find, just because I've used it for a while. I'm just, I'm just starting to learn that. Yeah. Have you been following us on the wall? Yeah, yeah. Very good. I was watching the dubbing loop one, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. Do you guys have the the dubbing hook? The cement or whatever? Headsman? Yeah. Or are you looking for the UV rest? Okay, so now, again, I've got it even smaller. I mean, I would do both. Tie that in there. That's head cement. Okay. And this is your. I'm just gonna wrap this locker down. That's a starter kit right there. Oh, okay. That's what he. We were all using UV resin though. Okay. How much is this one? It's on the back. So now I got this in place, as you can That's see. Ton of flies up on. So now. That's how we make the heads. Look no, like that. I'm gonna take my dubbing once again. Put her in there. Three wings is typically what you want. And this sort of helps fill in that cone now. Okay, before we do anything else, I forgot a step, a very important step. I do this once in a while. But I'm glad I caught myself. Most fish wouldn't care, but it bugs me. I've got a little bit of OCD like Scott Leboldis there. And Okay, so now I forgot the antenna on these. You can totally. I mean, I recommend it, but I mean, it's not you, right? Unless you go to like a like a most itself. So now, I'm just gonna tie these on. Here we go. Cut these off flush. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, whip finish on there. I'm glad I caught that. Okay, there we go. Now I'm happy. Here we go. Now put my duck. I forgot the antenna on it. I had to go back and fix it before. Oh, nice. I yeah. covered the head up. I'm like, uh oh. So I'll just put this dubbing in here. And that fills up the head. And while you're doing that, um, I should. Let's uh, take a quick sponsor break. Friday Night Flies would like to thank the following sponsors Superfly, Solarez, Chinook Wind Outfitters, Dr. Slick, Griffin, Stonefo. Back at her. Okay, we're back out of there. I've filled in that head now. I'm going to take our last bit of goose biots. I'm going to tie those in. 
for the legs. And then we're golden. Literally. Literally. And you'll you might even catch a golden fish with this if mm -hmm. if you fish it properly. Okay, where's my bottle pin I don't Oh, there we go. It's fixed. Cut these off. Cut these off. Lock her down. We'll put our final little bit of dubbing in here. And the only reason I use olive most of the time is for this, is for when I'm whip finishing. And then that way it doesn't show as much. But now it's time to whip finish. Lock her down. Lock her down. Here we go. Now, like I said, with this slotted bead, what I like to do is now that it's like this and it's on the bottom, I made sure I tied it in on the bottom. I'm just going to take a little bit of that bone dry, ultra thin. I'm just going to put it in there. And all that does is that helps secure the head, it helps secure everything that you got, especially when you're using. I also put a 0.20 lead wrap in here. And that helps secure that as well. And there you go. The Mighty Might Golden Stone. Give her, give her a little side profile for us. I mean, it's uh, from the side, you don't get to see the nice legs. The and legs and the wings. The case back and all that stuff looks pretty sexy. Ethan. Yeah. So You know what? I, I think you're going to have to leave that pattern here. Maybe a couple of them. Because uh, I've got to do a little testing with that. Yeah, I'll let Brad test those out. Let's see the belly side of that sucker again, too. That's a really nice tie, Ethan. I, I like I like using the diamond dub. It gives it a buggier look. Synthetic. It's, yeah. It's really synthetic, and it's easy to work with, too. Uh, as well as this. I mean, like, I could have probably made my back a little bit bigger for the head, but joys of tying live. That's right. We're live. We're going to go up and uh, you can do your sign out there. Okay. Looking fresh as always. Looking fresh, looking sexy, ladies. <laughs> yeah, yo. Okay, so that was my Mighty Mike Golden Stone. I don't know about you, but I love golden. I love stone flies. I like golden stones. If you're fishing in BC, always a good idea to have them in your box. Pemberton, Squamish, ready? Whistler, they all have golden stones. I know the ready? Columbia, they have lots of black stones. That's what I was working on this past week. Um, as well as Moto Minnows, that's always a good idea. So... Yeah, if I had to choose two options, I'd choose a moto and a golden stone to always have in my box. I think Zach's writing an article uh, about what top flies we like to have in our box. So, yeah, signing out.